my relationship with the media, I would say, mm, it's, it's not the greatest. Um, <laughs> they have negative things to say about me. Every time they see a hit, oh, he's doing that wrong, or you know, like you, know, you don't even know. You don't you probably don't even know football. They always got something to say. They just haters, really. My hits, for instance, that I was fine big on was, I think I was doing a good job from the approach standpoint. Right before I made contact, it could be the receiver might have moved, you know, or a ball could have been thrown behind a receiver to where he had to adjust, and my helmet might have touched the guy. I mean, that's what we wear equipment for. You know what I mean? That's what the helmet's here to protect us. I don't understand what they're trying to do. And that would be different if I was leading with my head, trying to, you know, targeting a guy. He certainly has no regard for, for the rules in the middle. He's going after guys' heads. You can see it. Drew Brees. This is a guy I really respect, man. I really respect this guy for what he's done in the league, how he approached the game. Man, he's a tremendous athlete. He's very good at what he do, you know, but he took a shot at me, man. Um, one of our games last year we played against, I was fine, you know, from hitting Darren Sproles. It wasn't a legal hit. You know, he was coming on a slant and I was going to hit him and he saw me at the last minute and ducked. So it was like my crown hit him a little bit. I was fine for that. He's one of our icon players in the league. You know, everybody respects him. They always listen. Everybody listens to what he say. And he took a shot at me nationally and told, you know, that I was trying to hurt people. I was trying to headhunt. I was trying to hurt his players. I'm a dirty player. These are words coming out of his mouth. Like, I was surprised at hearing that. Like, somebody told me that. I saw the tweets about it. And I'm like, nah, he didn't say that. And I seen the interview, and I'm like, are you serious? Like, I mean, this is an opportunity for a player to give me my respect, you know? I thought it was a low blow. I mean, no hard feelings. It is what it is, you know? But I just thought that was, you know, that was disrespectful. I remember being on the side of football where, you know, commentators and analysts was priding me on how good and how proper I'd tackle. And all of a sudden, one year, the worst tackler and targeting guys. You know, I was in San Francisco. I didn't get fined for hitting people, and I think I was hitting people harder. And uh, man, I wish we could play like the guys played in the 60s and clotheslining people and slamming them, you know, taking a hit. <laughs> nah, I was just joking. But, I mean, I just want the game to be played, how it's supposed to be played, how we all grew up watching it, you know what I mean? He's one of my favorite players, so. Why? Because yeah. if I were safety, I'd try to play like him. He's, 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 a, he's a great player. They definitely finding guys based on how much they make. I can make X amount of dollars and make a contact and make a legal hit, and another guy can make X amount of dollars, probably less money than me. And at the same time, it was the same contact, but I will get fined more just because I make more. That's that's not fair. It's in itself, you know what I mean. So I think it's something that needs to be, you know, talked about and definitely addressed because it's costing guys, you know, money, costing games, and it costing, you know, organizations at the same time. These guys they offer a lot of money to the play on Sundays, and you know. All right, here we got some of our house blends of Smoke Kings cognac. This is one of my favorites here. Um, they're actually soaked in cognac. Here we got some Padrones, rappers I listen to. Nas is one of his favorites here. Want to work on my own business and be my own boss. So why not get into something you love, you know what I mean? You, you enjoy, you know, doing a cigar lounge would be good. And I had my whole vision of, you know, how I wanted to look like, what kind of wanted to be. And I just, you know, proceeded with it. My first one I had was in Las Vegas, man. My first cigar was in Las Vegas in one of them clubs out there. And um, it was me and my buddies, and we was feeling ourselves, you know, had a little champagne. And thought it was big time. We had a few that night, and we had some professional baseball players that was there. And they were like, you got any more, bro? You got any more? We was like, yeah. So we passed them out. We all smoking with the baseball player. <laughs> I do look at myself as an entrepreneur, you know. I remember as being a kid, man, me and my best friend, we used to have raffles at school. <laughs> we paid probably like a dollar a ticket, tell the kids, you know, meet us at nutrition at lunchtime at this building, at the F building, we're gonna give out the raffle. I mean, the pot can be up to like hundred, two hundred dollars, you know. And, you know, the winner get half the money and we'll just split the other half between me and my buddy. I don't know if it was legal, but it worked for us. This is not your ordinary cigar lounge. Thought about doing like a sports bar at the same time. So, as you can see, we got a few plasmas on the wall here. 
some lazy boys, you know, you got your wife, you know, you having that, you want to get away, you want to come enjoy your own TV, you don't have a man cave at home, it's kind of like a man cave, you know, the man cave, locker room, slash lounge, you know, it's pretty nice. You know, I have a stick and just share conversations with a bunch of, you know, older guys, man, just talk, you know, the conversations in here are amazing. It's all positive stuff. I think that's what I enjoy the most about it, it's just the whole, you know, camaraderie around it. It was, it was, it was awesome.